Hello, I'm Troy Deitmeyer, Pioneer Field Agronomist in Northeast Iowa. And today is the first episode of seven in which we are going to introduce you to and step you through what we call here in Northeast Iowa, the yield pyramid. Now the yield pyramid has been based off of years of research and observations by Pioneer Agronomist. Now, anytime we build something, we need to start from the bottom up and we need to ensure that we have a very strong foundation. And while sometimes it's difficult to think that some blocks in our pyramid may be more important than others, we do know from years of experience that our bottom four blocks in our pyramid are critical to building not only a solid foundation, but a high yielding and profitable crop production system. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at our pyramid. Of the 10 blocks that we have made up in our pyramid, drainage is where it all starts. Proper drainage is critical for timely planting and harvesting, allows the root systems of our crop system to explore the whole soil profile for nutrients, promotes biological life for soil health, as well as good drainage prevents large nitrogen losses through denitrification. So we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on drainage because it is as, as simple as that. Now many people have told me that Troy, we just can't learn a lot from the 2019 growing season. I completely disagree. Go ahead and take out those yield maps from 2019 and take a look at those areas that need additional tile. You'll be able to see quickly, not only the areas that need additional drainage, but on how much return on investment you'll get from adding drainage tile to those wet spots. So you'll notice that seven of our 10 blocks in our pyramid are dealing with crop nutrition and fertility. So what this tells us is that we need to have a very sound and up-to-date soil sampling program. So I encourage you guys to, at this point, go out, go take, take your soil test and get them out and have them handy to review. And whether you take soil test on your own, there are four areas in which we need consistency to ensure that our soil sampling program will give accurate and repeatable results. So let's go ahead and take a look at what those four are. Number one is each probe that we put stick into the soil needs to be at the same angle. And the reason why we talk about this is because we need to have consistent depth in our soil probes in order to ensure that we're going to have repeatable results. And the reason for this is our crop roots explore several feet of soil and then bring those nutrients up to the surface in either our grain yield or our crop vegetation. Now as we take the grain off and that vegetation is returned to the soil, even if you don't till or you do tillage, essentially those nutrients are only going to get incorporated back into the soil about three to four inches deep. So if we have a soil probe that's going in at an angle and only goes four to six inches deep versus a soil probe that grows straight up and down that may go six to eight inches deep, it will have a drastic impact on our soil test results. So be sure, who, whether it's you or your crop consultant or retailer, to have that discussion with them that we need to ensure proper soil sampling angle and depth of the probe. The second point that we need to ensure that we have consistency with is the number of probes that we take per sample. Now, the reason why this is important is no different than why we look at multiple data points for plots when evaluating a hybrid. There's always going to be one or two outliers, and the more data points that we can incorporate into our evaluation, the better chance we have of diluting those outliers out. So that is why we find that 10 to 15 cores per soil sample is kind of that sweet spot. And then once you determine whether it's 10 or 15 or 13, be sure to be consistent in how many soil probes you take per soil sample. Now, the number three thing for having consistent soil sample results is to ensure that we take our soil test at the same time of year each time we soil sample a farm or a field. Whether you're going in the fall, the spring, or maybe just shortly after crop emergence, we need to ensure that we do that at the same time every time so we can accurately track our soil test. The reason for this 
is if we were sampling in the fall and now we go to spring, we could see as much as 10 to 15 percent difference in our soil test results going from fall to spring with the spring being higher. Now the reason for this is we could have mineralization of nutrients breaking down into the soil and becoming available from fall to spring, but probably one of the bigger effects is when the crop residues break down and also the nutrients leach from our crop residues and back into the soil and become available for the crop and that will show up on a soil test. So it's very critical once you've started with a certain time of year to stick with that. Now we have seen a trend in people taking more soil tests shortly after the crop emerges. And this actually is a great time for us to be taking our soil test because one, we have a little bit larger window. We're not as pressed for time. And the other thing is that once we have those results back, we essentially have all summer and early fall to determine on what we want to do and then build our, our prescriptions, our application plans. And then as soon as the crop is removed, we can start applying right away in the fall. So the number four thing to keep in mind when soil testing is try to always go to the same lab. And while you would think, well, Troy, all these labs are certified, I should get the same results when I send to different labs. The fact of the matter is, is there's always going to be some lab error. That's just the way it is. But if you can go to the same lab consistently, that will ensure that the same process has gone through every time. And therefore, hopefully, we can have a little bit more repeatability in our soil test results. So I get asked often, how many samples should we, take, we be taking within a field? And then another question that I get is, should we be doing grid or zone soil sampling? Now, I'll answer the, the how many samples to take first. In general, the answer is, the more samples you can take, the better. The Iowa Soybean Association did an excellent study on this just a few years ago. And let's go ahead and take a look at those results. As you can see, they took samples on five, two and a half, and one and a half acre grids. And you can see the differences in the map. The five acre grid captured very little variability. And you can see that there, as you move from the five acre grid to the two and a half acre grid, there's a completely different trend showing in that field. And then as we move to even a more intense grid sampling program, while the one and a half acre grid shows somewhat the same trend, there's definitely more detail in that map. And that's what we're looking for. So essentially it comes down to how much are you willing to spend. And I will ask you this, over a four year soil sample cycle, how much money do you spend on lime, P, and K? It's probably a significant amount. So spending that extra couple dollars an acre to go to a more intense soil sampling regimen, such as a one acre grid, in my opinion, can return excellent, excellent results. And you can get a very good return on your investment. So now to answer the question on, is grid sampling or zone sampling the best? I am more inclined to recommend grid soil sampling just for what we just went through because zone sampling from what I've seen from our customers typically has two large areas. I often see people's zones in which they take one soil test be five, 10, or even more acres. But we just showed you that even a five acre grid, we are missing a lot of variability out there in the field. So I guess the short answer is I always recommend doing a grid program to ensure that we can come back to that exact same spot four years down the line, and also the intensity is what allows us to pick up that variability. Now, lastly, I guess I would like to comment on supplementing your soil sample data with your yield monitor data. And the reason for this is our soil samples can kind of give us a direction in which we need to go. Soil sampling is not an exact science. It kind of keeps us between the road ditches and keeps us headed in the right direction. Your soil test will tell you, do I need to be on a build program or can I get by with a maintenance program? And as you can see in the example um, that we presented here, on the map on the left shows a field and the grid soil sample points. 
Now, on a two and a half acre grid, a soil sample is taken about every 330 feet. The computer then takes those results and makes a scientific guess, educated guess, on what the fertility is doing in between there. But look at the detail then and the information that we get back from our yield monitor data. We are essentially at five miles an hour getting a data point every seven feet. So there is no better way to build a crop removal prescription than using your yield map. And again, we can use our soil samples to tell us, do we need to be more aggressive? Should we just do crop removal? Or could we even get by with maybe um, in some tight, tight budget years like we're seeing right now, maybe doing just a little bit less than crop removal rate? So I highly encourage you guys to talk to your retailer or whoever that you're using to build your soil sample results and your prescriptions to talk about this, especially if you do a good job with keeping your yield monitor data fairly accurate. If you're checking your yield monitor fairly frequently during the harvest season, and oftentimes you're within that one to two percent error, you have a very, very good data set to give you a very accurate fertility application map. So I hope you enjoyed today's program. Uh, if you do have any questions, be sure to contact your local Pioneer sales representative. Thank you for spending the time watching our first episode of the Yield Pyramid. And from all of us at Pioneer, thank you for your business. Be safe, and we'll see you in the fields. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.